Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be trying to answer the question of well, how big is our Milky Way, our galaxy? Where is the edge of our galaxy? One of the recent studies tries to actually very thoroughly analyze this question and even gives us a rough estimate of where we believe the edge of our galaxy is. So let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. Well, it should come to as no surprise to you that we don't really know what our galaxy really looks like, mostly because we're looking at it from the inside. We've seen a lot of spiral galaxies that we think are possibly similar to the Milky Way, like this one right here, and we've even tried to simulate what this might look like by looking at it from the inside and then trying to basically extrapolate the outside. But so far we're not really sure on the shape, the number of arms, and obviously the actual full size of our galaxy. One of the recent studies from only um, a year or so ago actually established that our galaxy is very likely at least 120,000 light years in radius, which is practically the double the distance of the original estimate. In other words, even though we thought it looked kind of like this, in reality, it's practically double the size. We've also reanalyzed the mass, and today most scientists believe that Milky Way is probably the largest and the most massive galaxy in the so-called local group. We've always believed that the Andromeda galaxy that you see right here was larger and more massive, but most of the recent observations seem to tell us otherwise, so it does seem like Milky Way is larger and also more massive. But all of these observations are not really accurate, mostly because as of today we haven't really established where to stop measuring the actual edge of the galaxy. In other words, how do we actually establish where the galaxy ends and where the other one begins? And so this is what the recent study that you can find in the description below decided to do by both doing a lot of simulations using three different simulation systems and also trying to establish a kind of an official edge of where the galaxy should technically end. And it's very very surprising because it's a lot farther than we initially thought. And one of the main reasons is because this, the sort of prototypical galaxy that we're all used to, is actually only a very very small piece of what a true galaxy is. Today we know that apart from the actual galactic center and the disk itself, there are a lot of other structures inside the galaxy that are technically also part of it. There's obviously things like globular clusters that are connected to the galaxy. There's also a lot of gas around the galaxy itself. But most importantly, the vast majority of the mass is actually in the so-called halo. Now today, most scientists believe that this is consistent of dark matter, but there hasn't really been official proof of the existence of dark matter just yet. At the same time, apart from dark matter, halo also consists of a lot of individual stars, a lot of global clusters, and a huge amount of dust. As a matter of fact, if I were to try to simulate what all of this looks like without trying to crash my computer, if this is a typical galaxy here, here is what all of this might look like if we were to kind of zoom out of here. This huge spherical object you see around the galaxy is essentially gas, stars, global clusters and dark matter. And the amount of gas and stars here is very likely at least similar to the total mass of the actual prototypical galaxy that you see right here. In other words, if you were to take all of this and turn it into a bunch of individual stars and gas, you also get a very similar amount of mass in the halo as well. And this is of course not including the mysterious dark matter. But one thing that this study confirmed is that it's very likely that none of this looks like a sphere. So this halo of gas, stars, global clusters, and of course mysterious dark matter is very likely very differently shaped for every individual galaxy depending on various galactic interactions that happen in that particular local group. So for example, for the Milky Way galaxy that's right here and the Andromeda galaxy that's right here, because there's a lot of gravitational interaction between the two, and also because the actual dwarf galaxies that you see right here also interact with the halo, they do sort of turn this into a somewhat different shape and it's very difficult for us to predict right now what the halo of Milky Way currently looks like. I guess for now this is the best I can do because we just don't really know what the real shape is. Now at the same time, because the distance here is roughly around 1 million light years, it's practically equivalent to half the distance of Milky Way to the Andromeda, and assuming that the Andromeda galaxy also has a similar halo, they're probably already touching and interacting. And this also confirms another study that very recently discovered actual newborn stars being formed pretty much in the middle between the Milky Way and the Andromeda galaxy, which very likely resulted from the collision between two halos. 
So in other words, what all of this suggests is that not only is our galaxy much bigger and its edge much farther than we initially thought, but at the same time this also tells us that both galaxies are already colliding and creating a lot of new stars and a lot of new globular clusters. So even though we thought that this is maybe what the galactic collision would look like, it's already started, it's already going on and a lot of new things will be generated in the next few billion years before these two galaxies finally finish combining and turning into a single galaxy most likely called Milkdromeda. But I think what always surprised me is how much gas there is in this halo. Like I said previously, the mass of the total mass of gas here is essentially similar to the whole mass of the galaxy that we typically see. And although it's kind of difficult to understand or explain at first, but in reality it really makes a lot of sense. Mostly because of how galaxies are born, how they grow, and how they interact with other galaxies and gas around them. So today we actually know that once in a while a typical galaxy will become what's known as an AGN or active galactic nuclear galaxy, or essentially what we sometimes refer to as quasars, if you look at them from far away. These AGNs are normally defined by an extremely active supermassive black hole in the center that absorbs a huge amount of mass from all of the gas that flows into it, while at the same time creating these very powerful astrophysical jets. And these astrophysical jets, this is the picture from the M87 black hole astrophysical jet, kind of act like typical fountains. They throw out all of this matter really far away from the galaxy and sort of recirculate it back into the halo. But then once in a while, all of this halo gas accumulates into a big chunk and falls back into the center of the galaxy. So it's sort of like a self-feeding fountain of gas and energy. So once in a while the gas gets expelled, then it comes back and starts feeding the black hole again. And we've even observed this as what's known as Fermi bubbles right here in our own galaxy from the last such eruption. This was approximately a few million years ago and this gas is slowly moving out into the halo and at some point some other gas cloud might come back and restart the AGN inside the Milky Way galaxy as well. But because these eruptions are always very different, this is why the halo itself is not spherical. It always has these blobs everywhere and including of course the interaction with other galaxies, it grows into different directions and creates this interesting unusual shape that's always different for every single galaxy. But for our galaxy, using these simulations, the sciences established that the edge is probably around a million light years away, or roughly around 300 kiloparsec or so. But this value might also change as we discover a new dwarf galaxy in the vicinity, and as we understand how all of this sort of influences the size of our own galaxy. And one of the main reasons it's important to kind of understand what the total size of the galaxy is, is in regards to calculating various galactic interactions. Here, normally, we don't really count the mass and the size of the galaxy when we try to, for example, calculate a velocity of an escaping star or an interaction with another dwarf galaxy. But by knowing exactly how large and how massive the whole galaxy is, we'll be able to get much more accurate results in the future. And most importantly, this will help us one day understand and explain how the Milky Way galaxy was formed and how, essentially, we came to be as well because all this is sort of connected. And just to give you another visual representation of this, here in Space Engine, you can actually even see some of these halo stars and halo global clusters. They're basically these random stars here and there, like there's one right there, that appear away from the galaxy, but within the bounds of the so-called galactic halo. And they do extend quite a lot, up to um, several hundred thousand light years. And what's interesting is that some of these stars are actually really, really new. They're baby stars. So the only way that they could have been created is if there was a lot of gas circulating around the halo, and once in a while it would actually initiate the star formation. And as you can see in this particular case, this star even has its own planets. So maybe one day we'll discover a very unusual planet somewhere outside of the galaxy looking at us and being able to actually see what the shape of the galaxy is. So it's very possible that one day we'll discover such a star with planets orbiting around it, but being completely outside of the actual plane of the galaxy. But until we discover something else about the size of the galaxy or until some other revolutionary study, that's really it. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. Alternatively, you can support this channel by buying a beautiful, at least beautiful in my opinion, t-shirt, or also hoodie, or possibly a pillow. That's the one I'm wearing right now, by the way. Anyway, on that note, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye-bye.